Amen. Glory be to God. This is Valence Jesse Green with Sound Doctrine Ministry with my um, morning discussion. I just pray, amen, that, amen, we continue and God bless us in the word of God. Isaiah 58 and 8, amen, is my scripture, which I will be sharing with you as I continue on in the book of Isaiah. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word that you bless, touch, heal, and deliver and set free by your spirit and by your power. And give us wisdom and understanding. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Pray for me that I can speak God's word accordingly as he lead me. Amen. In Isaiah 58 and 8 it says in this B portion, And thine health or healing shall spring forth speedily. Amen. Thine health or thine healing, healing shall spring forth speedily. Amen. Glory be to God. As we continue on in the word of God, is God desire that we be healed speedily. Amen. And as I've been teaching in this book, as those are seeking and fasting and praying in the right perspective, amen, that our brothers and sisters might be blessed. Amen. Now, not only is, not only is God letting our light spring forth as the morning, but now we can partake of healing as well and be healed speedily that we can go and administer these things unto his people. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So it is God desire that we be healed speedily, that we can do his will. Amen. Hallelujah. Now let's go to the third epistle of John, the third epistle of John, way back in the back pretty much of your Bible. The third epistle of John, reading the second verse. It said, in John, the third epistle, the second verse, it said, Behold, I wish above all things, or in all respects, that thou mayest prosper and, and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. See, a lot of people work out, go to the gym, they get healthy, they get strong. You know, I work out, you know, was going to the gym before they closed the gym, so I work out in my basement. Amen. To take care of my temple. Glory be to God. Amen. But we don't want to just be health nuts and just taking care of these bodies because these bodies are perishable. We're taking, really, if you understand, God wants us to be healthy. But we're only taking care of ourselves that we might be healthy. Amen. Glory to God. Yet we still are dying, but yet we still want to take care of our bodies that we can function as these bodies depreciate. Amen. But many people are healthy physically, but they forget about the spiritual side, that soul of man. Because God, it, it, what he's saying here is God wants us to not only be physically healthy, but spiritually healthy. So a lot of people are physically healthy, glory to God, are in shape, but their souls are or they're not born again by the Spirit of God, so their souls and their minds are corrupt, are damaged, are not healed, are not healthy. See, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Your mind, how we think. As Christians, our mind, we're supposed to think good things. We were, we're supposed to think on things that are lovely. We're supposed to have a transformed mind, first of all. So we should be healed physically and spiritually in our minds. Amen. And our will should be towards the purpose and the plan of God. Amen. You know, those that are not saved, most of their desires and their wills do what they desire to do and can cause even sickness or death to come upon them. So your soul is your mind, your will, and our emotions. Our emotions are jacked up if we're not saved. But those that are saved, we have some 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 emotions of error that's why we stay before God that our emotions may be geared towards him that we can have healthy emotions that we can have spiritual uh, health in our mind in our soul and in our and in our emotions so God desired just as John desired Gaius because Gaius was walking in truth See, when you walk in truth, amen glory to God and the children of God we should walk in truth because as as John spoke to, to Gaius as the beloved, we are the beloved of God. So it is God's will, as John was willing, that Gaius, the one that was in truth, that he will prosper and be in good health, as his soul prosper. And that is physical and spiritual health, that we need our healing. 
that comes from God that we should desire of all Christians. Amen. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Amen. Glory be to God. 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. 1 Corinthians 3, starting at the 16th verse. It said, Know ye not that ye are the temples of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Glory to God. We know the Spirit of God dwelleth in us. Hallelujah. If any man defile the temple of God, now this is talking about any man. He's not referring to the Christian. He said any man. Well, he's referring to the Christians. Amen. He, 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 he would say brothering or the sons of God or the children of God. So this really, this scripture is really is dealing with, amen, as Paul is really talking about the local church, not the individual believer, but it can be applied, amen, to the body of the temple of God, which I will re read in, in 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. But if any man defile the temple of God, him, sh him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. See, glory to God. The temple of God is holy. If any man come in, any unbelievers come in the temple and defile the temples because we are the temples of God and he dwelleth in his temple. He not only dwelleth in the temple where we meet him on a perpetual basis, but he dwelleth in this temple. Glory be to God. So God will destroy that man that come in and destroy the temple or the outward temple or the body, amen, of Christ. Because you got to understand the temple physically, any man can come up in there and he can defile the temple, try to destroy the temple. Or in other words, destroy the temple. But a man can't come. We, as ourselves, we can destroy these temples by not taking care of them. But right now, Paul is talking about the physical temple because he's talking about any man can come in or any man that destroy the temple of God, him shall God destroy. See, God is not going to destroy us. He punishes his children. Listen to what I'm saying. Satan come to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen. But God will not destroy us. He may punish us. Amen. He may cause a death to come up on us that we die prematurely. But that's why this is referring to the outward temple. It sounds so, so, so impressive that it's talking about these bodies. But when we get to when God, when God addressed the body, we'll get to that in 6 and 19. It, but it's impressing upon us that he's talking about these temples. Let me read these verses again. Know ye not that ye are the temples of God, that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temples ye are. See, he, it sounds like he's saying you, or me, or you, which he is. But he's really preferring to the outward temple, where any man can come in. And defile or destroy the temple. And if any man come in and destroy that temple, God shall destroy that man. See, no man can jump in your body and destroy your temple. You can destroy your temple on your own. Glory be to God. So, but it still can be applied as the body of Christ. But just want to let you know, any man, not, not saying the brother, because some people think it's, he's talking about us. He said any man. He don't refer to Christians as any men or any man. He referred to us as brethren or children. So that would give you some grounds to understand what he's saying here. Now, you can use it. You can apply it to these temples. But Paul is really talking about the, 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 not the temple of an individual believer, but he's talking about the local church. Amen. So let's go over to Isaiah, first, I mean, 1 Corinthians 6 and 19, where he talks about the body. He mentioned this, mentioned it, mentions, mentions it plainly. Amen. 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For you are brought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now, here he's talking about the body. Because why? We are the temples of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we've been bought with a price. We're not of our own. 
So we just can't do what we want to do as some Christians think that they can do what they want to do with their body. But you got to understand, you've been bought with a price. The blood of Jesus on Calvary. He came and died and shed his blood, which, was, which you can't pay for the offering that Christ did for us on Calvary. Deliver us from hell, fire, and damnation. Then saved us. Glory to God. And you got to recognize what ye, it said, 19 verse, what ye, it said, what? Asking you a question. Know ye not that ye are the temples of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, are the Holy Spirit that is in us. He dwell in us. The Bible said he, he make his abode in us forever. What? So you got to understand this. Those who don't understand it, but most Christians do. Which it says, which ye have of God. This body we have is of God. With the Holy Spirit, we have a God that dwelleth in us when we came born again. And ye are not your own. We don't belong to ourselves. You got to realize that we are not our own. So if we, as we mature and we grow, we got to grow up to that, that place where we recognize that this body is not my temple. This body is not belong to me anymore. I glory to God. I have, amen, been bought with the price as we're going to read on. For ye are brought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. We need to glorify him in our body because he paid, amen, and, and he paid for us on Calvary. He redeemed us. In other words, that's where redemption comes from. He redeemed us. He bought us. He prayed, he paid for us through his blood shed on Calvary. His sacrifice and his burial and his death and resurrection. Glory to God. So we thank God that we belong to him. So let's recognize who we belong to. And, and in your spirits, which are God, we got to recognize God for ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God, which are God's. Our spirit belongs to God. Hallelujah. We don't belong to ourselves. We've been bought with a price. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now, let's go over to Mark. I want to share some things about the physical healing and the spiritual healing the more. Let's go to the book of Mark 7 and 24. People's, many, most people understand these verses, amen, of Scripture, but I just want to go over these verses of Scripture as well. Mark 7 and 24 through the 30th verse. It talks about the, so, the Syrophoenician woman or the Canaanite woman. And from this he arose, I'm at 7 and 24. And from this he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into a house and would have no man know it. But he could not be hid. He didn't want to be seen. He wanted to hide himself. I guess he wanted to get some rest or what have you. 25th verse. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit and heard of him and came and fell at his feet. When you fall at, the, at, at Christ's feet, you begin to worship him and recognize that he's not a mere man. So she believed in him and worshiped him. She fell at his feet. She was a saved believer being a Canaanite, a Syrophoenician woman. She fell at his feet. Hallelujah. So she recognized being a Gentile. Hallelujah. Let's read on. The woman was a Greek or a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by nature. I mean by nation. Hallelujah. Or by birth. And she besought him or kept begging. She, was, she kept begging him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. Hallelujah. Amen. She could have cast the devil out of her daughter. But for some reason, because she believed in Jesus Christ, she fell at his feet and she worshipped him. But for some reason, maybe she wasn't fasting in prayer. Because you know he told his disciples when he was there, some, these, these kinds come out by fasting and prayer. Some demons you got to come out through fasting and prayer. But she believed enough in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior that the devil might be, that the devil might be cast out of her daughter. So that lets you know she did have faith and she did believe in Jesus Christ enough that her faith, her faith delivered her own daughter 
before she even got to the house. Amen. Glory be to God of this demon. Hallelujah. 27th verse, it says, But Jesus said unto her, Let the children's first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it unto the dogs. See, healing is the children's bread. That's our plot. That's what belongs to us. Let us be filled. Amen. Or healed or delivered. Because this belongs to us. This is, our, this is the children's bread. We are the children of God. And, 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 to, and, and listen, let me read that again. But Jesus says to her, let the children first be filled. We are the children, the sons of God. Hallelujah. For it is not meat or good to take the children's bread. The, ch the healing the healing and deliverance belong to us. Glory be to God. He said it's not good to take it and cast it to dogs. So listen, and, and, the, and the, take it and cast it unto the dogs. See, he was not being a cruel or dismissal, but he tests her. He tests her resolve, persistent. Her, her, he tests her resolve and her persistent and her faith. He was testing her. Now she could have got mad. You call me a dog? And just walked away. And her daughter wouldn't get healed. But she was begging and persistent in that 26th verse. And let's, let's read it again. The woman was a Greek or a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by nation, by nation or by birth. And, and, he, and she besought him or, or kept begging him that he would cast forth the devil or the demon out of her daughter. She was persistent. He tried her faith. Okay. You want the children's bread? You want me to give it to you? But listen, then Jesus said, well, let the children be fed first. Glory to God. Let them be filled first. For it's not meat. To, I'm in the 27th verse, but the 27th verse again. But Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled. Hallelujah. For it is not meat or good to take the children's bread and cast it unto the dogs. So he wasn't trying to be rude or the little dogs. He wasn't trying to be rude. Glory to God, but he wanted to try her faith and see her persistence and test her resolve and persistent and her faith as all in one. Hallelujah. So, amen, let's read on. The 28th verse, and she answered and said, listen to this woman, faith. And she answered and said unto him, yes, Lord. She even called him Lord. So she recognized him as Lord. If she recognized him as Lord, she had to recognize him as Savior. This is a Canaanite woman. This is a Gentile. Hallelujah. Just like that Gentile Roman soldier that came to Jesus. And he said, Lord, my, my servant is at home about, uh, about to die. At the point of death. And Jesus said, well, let's go, we, uh, let's, uh, uh, let's go to your house and I will lay hands on her and heal her. But the, the, but the Roman soldier said, uh-uh, Lord, I'm a man of authority. He said, I tell them to come, my servants to come and to go, and they do what I tell them to do. Lord, all you got to do is speak the word. And Jesus said, I never have seen so great a faith in Israel. So don't tell me, the, the people that think that people can be just black folks or white folks or the, uh, whatever color, the Hebrew or Jew or Gentile or whatever they call themselves to be, that they only ones can be saved or can be saved. Glory be to God. No, anyone, amen, that have faith in our Lord and Savior, persistent faith, resolve faith, faith that's going to get results. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Persistent. But this man walked in authority. He recognized the authority of Jesus Christ, the Holy authority and the power of our Lord and Savior. And Jesus recommended his faith. Just as he's recommending this, he's going to recommend this woman's faith. But that man has so great a faith. All you have to do is speak the word, Lord, and my servant would be healed. That was, that was great faith. And, it, and Jesus, it, 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 it inspired Jesus to say that, man, no greater faith in Israel. And that's kind of bad to say that because we are the people of God. We should have, as the people of God, greater faith than those who are not the descendants of God that who have been born again and believe even God's own people. We should have more faith 
than these that are Gentiles. But now Gentile and Jew are become one. But God just showing us that they're showing us that those that don't are not a part of I mean, the tribe of Israel or those who outside of Israel as he going outside of the camp amongst the Samaritans and reaching out to these lost folks that any, anybody can be healed and delivered. Amen. Glory to God. Even the strangers, even the, the ones that are unsaved, they can have faith and believe in even the Gentile, the Jew or Gentile. It doesn't matter because God is his will that everyone be physically healed and spiritually healed. Amen. And so, they, amen. This woman, she was already physical and spiritual healed because she was showing forth her faith. Amen. Let's go back to the 28th verse. Amen. In Mark 7. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs on the table eat the children's crumb. She said, Yes, Lord. She didn't get mad. <laughs> it could have been an insult to her. You calling me a dog? I'm a Phoenician woman. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Canaanite. But she humbled herself and realized, Lord, I want healing for my daughter. If you want something bad and you persistent, crying out to the Lord, amen, I don't care who you are. Glory to God. This woman said, even the dogs get the crumbs. All I want is the crumbs, Lord. The crumbs will heal my daughter. Just give me the crumbs. That's faith. Just a, that's a grain of a, just what Jesus said. If you have a faith as a grain of a mustard, speak, a mustard seed, you can speak unto that mountain and it be cast into the sea. Glory be to God. Let's read this last verse in this 29, uh, 7 to 29. And he said unto her, for this saying, for this saying, because you recognize that healing is the children's bread. But you said, just give me the crumbs. That's faith. Then she said, Lord, just give, me the, just give me the crumbs, Lord. The dogs get the crumbs. Yeah, I ain't no good. Yeah, I'm an adult, but I'm saved. I'm a believer. But my daughter's laying sick. She need healing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For this saying, go thy way, the demon or the devil is gone, or the devil has gone out of thy daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil or the demon gone out and her daughter and her daughter laid up on the bed. That's a blessing. That's physical healing and spiritual healing. When Jesus heals, not only do she, the, I don't know if that little girl was saved or not, but it's her mama believed in Jesus. She came to Jesus. She sought Jesus. She beseeched Jesus. She knew he was the Messiah. She knew he was the Lord. She knew he can heal her, heal her daughter. No one else could. So she came to the source of healing and deliverance to our Lord and Savior. Glory be to God. And not only did he heal her daughter, I believe so that her daughter was a believer as well. Because Jesus does not heal unless the healing comes for salvation and deliverance. Not just, to merge, just merely just to give a person a healing and go on their way and continue in sin. Hallelujah. What did he tell the woman that their brothers committed adultery? He that without sin cast the first stone. And he told her, woman, thou, 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 thou faith has made thee whole. Go thy way and sin no more. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Now let's go into this last verse, the book of Luke. Luke 11, 17 and 11. Luke 17 and 11. About these lepers. I like the story about these lepers. Only one came back... <laughs> To be physically, spiritually healed. The rest of them took the, the physical healing and just walked on. But that was not God's will. He asked for all of them to come back. He was looking for all of them to come back. Let's read this before I get the talk in here. Luke 17 and 11. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And he entered into a certain village, a certain village. There met him ten men that were leopards, which stood afar off. You know, the leopards always were standing afar off because they had to proclaim unclean. They come be a mix of the around the crowd because leprosy was contagious. Glory to God. And in the 13th verse, they say, and they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, master, which means teacher, have mercy on us. 
14 verse. And when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourself unto the priest. Go show yourself into the priest. Now about now you can read in Leviticus about the priest, about the cleansing of the leopard and going before the priest is in Leviticus 14 chapter, the first to the 32nd verse. They had to go to the priest in order to be cleansed from leper or to pronounce clean. The, pre, the priest had to pronounce them clean after they went through the ordinance of cleansing a leopard. Amen. But they didn't even get to the priest. Matter of fact, this is as we read on in this uh, in the 18 verse, it talks about him. These are being strangers or these being Gentiles. Uh, Gentiles were forbidden to enter in the temple inner courts or confinements, let alone a leopard. So Jesus, but they went head on in faith, regardless of the rituals or the laws or the institutions of the temple. And let's read on. It says. And it came to pass, it's 14 verse in Luke 17. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. They was going to the temple, going to the priest, regardless of the fact of they wouldn't welcome or strangers or Gentiles were forbidden to enter into the temple's inner confines, let alone a leopard. But they believed what Jesus said. Hallelujah. To the cleansing of their souls. Of their bodies, physically, physical health. Now, now, now spiritually, only one was physically and spiritually healed. Let's read on. And one of them, when he was, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. A loud voice glorified God. Hallelujah. And fell down at his feet, fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks and he was a Samaritan. The Samaritan. Hallelujah. Fell at his feet, began to worship. They began to honor and give him praise and give him glory. Hallelujah. Only the one of them. It was, let's, let's read on. And Jesus asked and said, where are there not 10 cleansed? But where are the nine? See, Jesus is not in just merely just want to heal people physically and they go on and not be healed spiritually. Glory be to God. He want them to be made whole physically and spiritually. Glory be to God. And that's what we're going to read on it. And we end in this 19 verse. Amen. 18 verse said, there are, there are not found, there are not found that return to give glory to God. Save this stranger. Save this stranger. This Gentile, hallelujah, he came and he glorified God. I guess that when they was going in faith, they probably was thinking, we can't go to the temple, but we're going to go. If Jesus said go to the temple, we're going to go to the temple. I guess the rest of them kept on going to the temple to the religious folks. But he came back and rep and, re and worship and honor the true and the living God. He just didn't get a physical healing. He got a spiritual healing as well. And that's why, amen, God required uh, us to be healed. That, that's why I read in John, the third epistle of John, amen, let me read that again. Amen, it says, I, beloved, we are the beloved children of God. I will, I wish in all aspects or all respects that ye may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper. Spiritually, we got to prosper, even as our physical body prosper and be in good health. That is the will of God. Those that are walking in the faith and the truth of our Lord and Savior, the beloved. Glory to God. So this stranger, this stranger, this Gentile, people going to tell me that uh, only Jews going to be saved. That's a lie. They need to read the word of the Lord and they'll realize that God comes to save and die for the sins of the whole world. That's why I titled this message, and thine health shall spring forth speedily. As they was going, this leopard and the other ten, other nine were healed speedily. As they went, they was cleansed or healed. Ha, hallelujah. Let's finish this 19th verse. And he said unto him, Arise, arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. God wants us to be whole. Born again, have been filled of his spirit. 
healed physically, physical health, have physical health and spiritual health. That is being made whole in our bodies and in our spirits, our soul, our mind, and our emotions. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Amen. It's a blessing to be able to share this with you guys. Amen. Be healed speedily, physically and spiritually so. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. And God bless you with love.